Hello. Hello, everybody. Hi, Dr. Nick. Hello, everyone. Uh, producer Dan here with another quick... Hello, producer Dan here with another quick little message to say thank you so much for your ongoing patience uh, and all the lovely comments and messages we're receiving. Good news. We're back on track as of next Monday, the 11th of April. Uh, main scheduled episodes will resume. Until then, enjoy this Patreon special uh, and see you soon. So obviously over the next few years, whenever anybody asked Antonio about his wife and where she possibly was... Me no no! <laughs> Got it, Brad? Is that even a... Not even a telling accent, really, is it, Dan? No. Hello and welcome back to I Could Murder a Minnesota episode number 53. It is another Minnesota. Ben Stretchin's getting ready for this. He said, yeah. honestly, he said, before we start this. Romper, this... stomper. No, what are you going to say, Tom? Yeah, thank you. Uh, he huh? said, this is going to be the best episode these guys have ever heard. I can't wait yeah, for the show. to them. blow them away. You're going to blow their... Them away. Minds. Perfect. But even better than, yeah. Picking up straight away. White House Farm. Jumper. I believe. Don't know. It's in... That's my guess. That's where my money is. I recognise it from the White House Farm case. Could be wrong. I know it's definitely last series. Yes, because we did the swapsy for your Tony Soprano mm. shirt. Yep. So White House Farm, I probably landed on the money. Yeah, you're right. Just checking the episode. Oh, wow. And your t-shirts kind of give me paint, pa paint in the house kind of vibes. Yep. You throw it on. Yeah. Anything else? <laughs> <laughs> We had to make sure that the stains weren't in shot. Yeah. He, he, start, he started shouting. He, was, he didn't stop shouting. He started shouting. He saw them. He shouted. How are you, Dan? I am really good this what week. You, what you. are you wearing, Dan? Sum it up in a, a word. simple grey uh, Slazenger top. <laughs> Ten I actually, tennis. I actually bought this t-shirt uh, on your stag do. Do you remember, Ben? I remember. We went shopping together. Sports Direct, big one, Newcastle. Djokovic. Good Dan, business. what do you think about that? He's an idiot. Yeah. There you go. I think it's a bit controversial Australia changing it and flipping flopping. It was like watching a tennis match with the way they're going from one thing to another. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you don't even know what happened. Visa issues, um, isolation issues. Doesn't rules are rules though, Tom. They are, but then why would you grant him immunity to it and then take it away? Good question. Well, which country was he trying to get into? Australia. Australia. Yeah. Well, speaking of that, lads, got a great case for you this week. Guess what country it's based in? Austria. You dumb fuck. Australia. Australia. Uh, Australia. Okay. What is it then, Ben? Well, the kangaroos have come back. <laughs> and this time they mean it. Well, first of all, before we jump in, no. a massive thank you to all the new and existing Patronies. We appreciate it a whole, a whole lot. A whole lot. Was replying to someone, clicked refresh, and there's a bunch of new ones out of nowhere. So thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Anyway, yeah, thank you so much, guys. We're very happy to have you here. And we're happy to kind of up the content over here. We have recently mm. started filming in this different setup which here's a question for you guys go on not you or dan um for the patreonies i mean dan i've already discussed this behind the scenes oh, um, and behind my back doesn't concern you okay it's about the podcast um <laughs> we i prefer this setup than the main episode setup i think it flows better in teams in between cut in between me and ben and dan i think it just flows more um, but we've been said that the main setup with us both being on camera is more showy. So for a main episode and series, <laughs> I want to know what you guys think in terms of just giggling away. Um, what you guys think in regards to which do you prefer mm. this setup or the main episode setup? This one certainly feels a lot more relaxed. Yeah, I think it, it pacing is better. I am uh, guilty of this when we're side by side. Sometimes I don't know when you're talking and I just start. But other times I do that and I'm looking at you. That's just common interruptions. Yeah. yeah common interruption. Shins. Yes, being, being <clears throat> rude. Uh, but I think like in terms of as well, when someone's reading something, it's hard for the other one to not look bored or it, mm. you always have to think, be thinking about what your face is doing all the time. I look at that coffee maker quite a lot when you're talking, when you're reading. Is that because you find him boring or? No, he's not boring. No. 
if anything. Why do you say that? What do you think about uh, well, I start. <laughs> I start reading my next paragraph. Like, well, he's got a short one there. I've got a long one here, but that's got harder words so in it. You're prepping yourself for the next. Yeah. Then I'm like, okay, well, I can't look like I'm reading while he's reading. So I'll look at that coffee machine and then I just, it's a brand called Krups. So then the word Krups comes into my head, then cups, Krups should probably make cups, cups of coffee, Krups coffee. Um, and that's Krups? Yeah. But let us know in the comments below what you think, because I would even be keen to change this out of the main main series. Do we get a sign this? Or? Yes. Well, I thought you'd already been this. talking about it. We have. Yeah, like, we have, we have, we have. Extensively. But yeah, let us know. What would, what I prefer this up massively. In terms of how it looks and in terms of it, how when we film it it's a lot more i don't know just it's a different vibe but yeah let us know in the comments below what you think um what, what setup you prefer i'd be interested to know what you guys have to think yeah another little bit of news is uh we'll be back with series five this coming monday we can't wait to share what we've been up to can't wait we can't wait can is, we? is it news to? is it news to it's news to you know, they already know. They told them twice. Well, <laughs> if anything, three times we posted that. Here's a reminder, guys. We're back oh. this Monday with Series Five. Whoop, whoop. There you go. That's a reminder for you. We're going to be back. We've got a big, big case. Um, mm. If anything, I think is it longer than any, the other? At the moment, it is. Yeah, it's probably, it's probably going to be the. It will be our longest episode to date, I believe. Is it? Hmm. I don't know. Could be. Not sure. It's up there. Definitely yeah, up yeah. there. Definitely up there. So there you go. We're excited to be back. But anyway, this week's case, we're heading to a part of the world we've spent a fair amount of time in. Um, probably more than Novak. Sorry? Stevenage. Stevenage, no. Uh, no. Australia. Second guess. Second guess. Silver medal for Tom. This was requested by Lisa Gregg, who I believe is also a resident Australian, which is great. Cheers, um, Lisa. So cheers. Good day. Not good day. Uh, how, you, how do you do, Lisa? Good to see you. Um, supported us for a very long time on Patreon, which we very much appreciate. Uh, and this is one that uh, not only has Lisa requested, but she also has a slight bit of personal experience. Love that. Of the case, which is very, very exciting. So it is, of course, the case of the Pajama Girl murder. Is that eerie enough? That was eerie. That's a lot better than the other ones. Not bad. The Pajama Girl murder. Are you grinning when you say it? <clears throat> The Pajama Girl Murder. Still a bit. What's that little? Oh. <laughs> the Pajama Girl Murder. So eerie. Do you want me to say it eerie? Mm. <clears throat> the Pajama Girl Murder. Eerie. The Pajama Girl Murder. <laughs> How do you know? Do you know what eerie. Like eerie? As in scary. Yeah. You've done rape. The Pajama Girl Murders. But it's just one murder, not plural. The Pajama Girl Murder. Right, still there. So we go all the way back to August 27th, 1934, on a hot summer's day just outside the city of Albury. Just outside the city of Albury in New South Wales, Australia, a local farmer named Tom Griffith is walking his prize bull along How Long Road. That's good. What's How long is it? Sorry, you had a question. Uh, yeah. How long is the road? No, the question was going to be, what's the bull's name? Brahma. Didn't say it, didn't. That's didn't what, get the that's name that's of the... That's what came up with. Didn't get the name of the bull... But I did do a bit of trivia for you. What? How long is How Long Road? Okay, how long is How Long Road? How Long Road has a length of 33.17 kilometres. It connects Gurumada to Walbundry. How long is Piece of String Road? Well, how long is Piece of String? It's not relevant to the road, is it? Depends on how you're measuring it. Not in string lengths. Depends on the situation. What the so anyway, this farmer is walking his bull along How Long Road when he notices a heavy scent of kerosene in the air or is it just a flammable substance kerosene is um isn't that is kerosene jet oil i think it's just what you use to uh, i think it is jet fuel isn't it? Is it i thought kerosene was um what you used to like lanterns that it kind of reminds me of fallout boy yeah and kerosene. annoyingly tom's right <laughs> sorry guys which part kerosene is used for um uh, paraf it's, uh for lamp oil What's jet fuel then? So anyway, he's walking along How Long Road with his bull and he notices a scent of kerosene in the air. This brings him to notice the charred remains of a woman laying in the entry of a culvert. Kerosene. Kerosene what? is jet fuel. So we're both right. Unleaded kerosene, yeah. Yeah, you're both right. Well done. Cool, perfect. Happy with that. So he notices the, the charred remains of a woman laying in the entry of a culvert, which is basically concrete sewage tunnel. Okay, is it like where in Greece did the race? 
Yes, 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 yes. Also, kind of the uh, 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 peak scene in Shawshank. This culvert formed the entry of Splitter's Creek. A lot of good road names and creek names here. The remains were slightly covered by a Hessian sack. It's important to note that the body would not have been spotted by any vehicles driving along Howlong Road. It had basically been indicated that perhaps someone had used the culvert as well as the Hessian sack and the remote location to try and hide the body. The body was found with such severe burns that she was unrecognizable. And strangely for the time, she was found wearing yellow silk traditional Chinese pajamas patterned by dragon emblems. So was that put on it afterwards? Well, they were in fairly pristine condition, but what made it even stranger is the fact that it was in a fairly rural and lower class area of Australia at the time. It was depression area at the time as well, so such clothing would have only been considered to be worn by the rich. Uh, it was considered fairly luxurious to own Chinese pajamas at the time. Uh, also kind of bohemian and therefore a rarity. Because if she was burnt to the point of being unrecognizable. But the pajamas were fine. Mm. Yeah. And mm. the sack was fine as well. The victim's body and face was not only severely burnt, but was also severely beaten. And the police were not able to tell by the crime scene, but a later X-way... X-way. Yeah, you got me. Sorry. <laughs> no, you got me. I deserve that. that. that Dan, I deserve that I'm from needed. you. I'm needed. Sorry, mate. No, 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 I deserved no, it from you. I deserved it from, from you. I deserved it. I know, I'm sorry. Though. The victim's body and face was not only severely burnt, but was also severely beaten. And the police were not able to tell by the initial crime scene, but a later X-way... <laughs> I knew it was coming. I was waiting. Your head was going a million miles an hour. I go, don't say it. Don't say it. Oh. Shit in hell. But a later x-ray would reveal that she had in fact been shot in the head and neck. Fuck. Yeah. It was a very ghastly scene. Her head was also wrapped in a towel and the remainder of her body was in the pyjamas. Because of this, she becomes known by locals and in the media as the pyjama girl. And with no suspects and no motives clear, the mystery of the pajama girl begins to make the rounds. Did the farmer that found it was he wearing sunglasses? No. Way bands. So all the police have initially to go off is her height, which she was five foot, her hair colour, she was a brunette, and an estimation of her age. They believed her to be mid to late twenties. But as you could have guessed, this was a very common description and it didn't resonate with any missing persons at the time. Set the scene there, guys giving you a bit of a description of your crime scene. We've covered uh, a lot of cases in our time. Mm, too many. Uh, you've got a body, which was clearly brutally beaten, perhaps before, during, or even after the murder. We don't know. You only have her hair color, height, and estimation of her age. You have no other evidence apart from the yellow silk Chinese pajamas. No witnesses, no suspects, no missing persons, no possible motive. What do you do or what would you do? in that situation. And my job as a policeman? Yeah. Because if I was a policeman, I'd carry on doing rounds, so I'd just stick to the job at hand. Yeah, you, you've been assigned this case. Okay. That's quite big. Detective promotion. Lambert and Dickie Tom. Um, I would look at the pyjamas yes. and see where they're bought from. We should work together. Yeah, if they're not common, look common mm -hmm. place around that, in that time, I'd be like, where are they from? And then if it was a cluster, if they're, not, if they're, if they're very bohemian and not the usual thing to see, mm, follow so that okay. trail. That's yeah. what I'll go Just down. Follow the trail of the pajamas. You found would, I'm with you, boy. Let's get a coffee down. Yeah. Case closed then. We'll yeah. talk about the setup of the podcast as well. Um, a cup of joe. Sounds good. You're not there. <laughs> Sounds good for. You could serve us the coffee in this nah. scenario. Nah. Jill, another one. She's so lazy. She stinks. I wish the Australian police made the, the similar connection to yourself, but in fact, Throughout this case, the pajamas will remain a fairly loose piece of evidence. They don't really follow. Get the wrong up. size. Um, I'm. It's not clear. It's not clear, but loose. Yeah, I get it. Very good. Very good. So after the initial investigation failed to identify her, the Australian police make the interesting and fairly morbid decision to put her body on public display. Fucking hell. Yeah. I mean, the other thing you do is the missing persons. And then get someone to describe someone who's a similar yeah. build and hair colour. But they put thought display. it'd be yeah, more of a move to put her body on public display in Sydney. In what kind what of... What do you mean? So the police preserve her body in a bar for formalin and displayed her to the general public at the Sydney University Medical School. Damien Hurst. For the next eight years. Eight years, Damien Hurst level. There you go. So eight years. General admission. 
straight in there. Have a look. This is like uh, the Carl Tanzler one we did at the very beginning. Yeah. With when um, it was Carl Tanzler, wasn't it? Carl Tanzler, yeah. And when he got the body, he tried to make her into basically try and bring her back to life, start putting things on her. Mm. And that body was put into a. It was I like think he used formalin, but it was no, like... no, no, no. But he he didn't use anything like that. But all he did was he would essentially stuff her body with cloth. Yeah. Give her marble eyes, and basically turn her into a human doll. Mm -hmm. But that body was put into a public space and sold tickets. Yes, and with Tanzler's work, obviously it didn't really look like a human by the end no. of it. Whereas this, from what I understand, it's a charred set of human remains. Yeah. Over the next eight years, the body is preserved in a bath of formalin. So of course this generated a massive amount of public interest and becomes somewhat of a macabre. It's a dark tourism. They flock to the scene. However, the bold move that the police make appears to pay off as they start to receive hundreds of tip-offs and information from individuals claiming to know who the mystery murder victim was. Over the eight years? Over the eight-year period. So 100 tips over that eight-year period. It probably, I don't know if that's a good return or not. So just on the uh, the tub that the, the body was preserved in, so Lisa, who requested this case, has actually been to see the tub. Oh, wow. As far as I could tell from the messages, the body was no longer in the tub, but the tub she has seen. There's been a very artsy kind of art house Italian movie made about this case in which she's literally in a glass box. You can see all angles of her body and she's not really that burnt. It's quite, it's an interesting... Uh, That's more like the I mean, her shark and... Yeah, smell her. yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Yes, um, but we'll put some footage up here. It's you, it's um, an interesting scene, but it really does paint the picture well of, you know, tourists flocking to see this rather than actually yeah. trying to solve the crime. A thing that you wear Your yellow pyjama The perfume in your hair So as a result of these tip-offs, several names were suggested for the identity of the dead woman. Among them were two particular names that came up again and again and again. The first was Anna Philomena Morgan and the second was Linda Agostini. Now, the reason that their names kept coming up was that both women were missing from a similar time frame. Both bore a likeness to the pajama girl, and both were of the right age. Basically, New South Wales Police, although they received these names come up quite commonly, they decided that they weren't, they couldn't possibly be the pajama girl. They stated that the dental records didn't match these two individuals, right. and that they, they were satisfied that they could both be ruled out. But these are names that keep coming up. It's this, it's Linda, it's Anna, it's Linda, it's Anna. So police would consistently receive anonymous phone call tip-offs that the body belonged to that of 28-year-old Sydney Cinema Usherette, which is a mouthful, Linda Agostini. Police are adamant that it couldn't possibly be Linda as the pajama girl's dental records show that she had six fillings and Linda Agostini had eight fillings. So that was how they were able to rule her out. They also rule out Anna Morgan for the very same reason. When the case goes cold, and no identity is confirmed. 10 years later, in 1944, a number of bizarre coincidences lead to a breakthrough. A new police commissioner is appointed for New South Wales, William McKay, and he is quite an underwhelming appointment. In a bid to win respect and restore the New South Wales police force's reputation, he reopens, he makes a big announcement to say that he's gonna reopen the Pajama Girl case, and he is adamant that he will solve it. So it's all like out of nowhere, he picks this specific case that he's gonna solve. It's all quite a bit, people are a bit like, why did he bring that one up? How long after it was it? 10 years. 10 years. Yeah. So McKay assigns a new team of detectives who re-examine all the evidence, all case files, and every potential victim identified in minute detail. After rolling out several of the key victims that were put forward, the team re-arrive at Linda Agostini. McKay sees that she was ruled out due to her dental records. However, he immediately orders his team to re-examine the body, and unbelievably, in re-examining her body, they find two new fillings, which is highly suspicious. Uh, given the set of circumstances. Apparently they had been missed during the first examination and the dental records matched identically to Linda Agostini. How the fuck did he miss two films? I don't know. So five people who were close to Linda travelled to Sydney and positively identified the body as that of Linda. The only person they can't seem to now locate is her husband, Tony Agostini. So Tony had been out of the country for the previous four years. It was World War II at the time and he had been put into internment camps due to the fact that he had nationalist sympathies for Italy, who were obviously on Germany's side during World War II. Even more bizarrely, it is revealed that the new police commissioner, William McKay, has a long-standing friendship with Tony Agostini and that Tony Agostini had in fact been the waiter 
of his favourite Italian restaurant for several years. He had been right under the police commissioner's nose the entire time. Agostini? I ordered the tortellini. Fettuccine, broccolini, arancini. They all work. Unlike the previous team of detectives. Am I right? You wrote this all down. No. You did. No, I didn't. You did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. So McKay apprehends Tony Agostini and escorts him immediately to his office. Noticing that Agostini seemed very, very nervous at the time, McKay asked him what had come over him. And after 10 years of investigation, Antonio Agostini then confessed to killing his wife. So it comes to light via Agostini's uh, statement to the police that he had accidentally, accidentally shot and killed his wife, Linda, during a heated argument while the couple were living together over in Melbourne. So due to the fear of being accused of his wife's murder, he had decided to drive the body over the state and dump the body outside of the culvert. He then poured kerosene over the body and set fire to it, shortly before dressing the body in silk pajamas. So that was kind of a red herring. Yeah, very good red herring. You know, you guys would still be looking at the pajamas by the sound of it. Not, and that's not a dig. You had every right to. Yeah, but I do. Obviously, I do the normal checks first, like the teeth, and actually look at the teeth. Yeah, not like your guys who just missed the teeth. Out. These weren't my guys. These weren't my guys. Whenever anybody asked Antonio about his wife's whereabouts over the next ten years, obviously four of which he spent in a an internment camp. So it was actually that was kind of a blessing in disguise. He was probably yeah, wasn't. Well. He would explain that she went back to Italy and left him for another man. The arrest of Agostini was a media sensation at the time, as it meant that the pyjama girl had finally been identified. He was immediately arrested under suspicion of her murder and was extradited to Melbourne, where he was then tried for murder. Melbourne. Amazingly, he was acquitted for the murder charge, but was found guilty of the less severe charge of manslaughter, and he was sentenced to just six years imprisonment. Unbelievably as well, he only served three years and nine months of that six-year sentence. He must have been a fucking good waiter if he's getting this one. There you go, yeah. Well, he waited it out for three years and nine months, which was mental. And then he was released in 1948 and subsequently deported back to Italy, where he would later die in 1969. Of natural causes from what I can see from what you can see is there nothing there on your sheet just not it just says natural causes does not say natural causes. <laughs> so Linda Agostini a short bit of information about her because she lived a really interesting life she was actually born Florence Linda Platt in Forest Hill in South East London she worked in a sweet shop in Surrey before saving up the funds to travel to New Zealand and at the age of 19 she allegedly escaped a proposed marriage of a family friend and fleed to Australia to live in Sydney and whilst in Sydney, she worked in a cinema where she then would eventually meet Antonio Agostini. Her marriage to Italian-born Antonio Agostini uh, was the beginning of a very unhappy time for Linda. And this would see the couple eventually move to Melbourne. He wanted to get her away from friends that she had in Sydney, who he believed were corrupting her and she was involved in. She was a heavy drinker. She was involved in a jazz age party going, which apparently was quite a scene at the time, but he didn't want anything to do with that. He'd be physically aggressive and beat her on many occasions and wanted to isolate her from her friends and her colleagues. A lot of people feel suspicious to this day that Agostini was not the real perpetrator behind the crime and also that Linda Agostini was not the real victim. Believing that Linda and Tony both to be cover-ups for the New South Wales Police Department, they believe it all too coincidental that Tony Agostini had been right in front of the detectives' noses all that time. Surely that paints him in a bad light. Well, first of all, they just think that, right, okay, a new, a new commission is appointed. A few weeks later, Tony Agostini arrested, mm. charged, body identified, couple of missing fillings. Mm. Happened very quick. Yeah, but mm, yeah, finding the extra teeth with the extra fillings is oh, yeah. sus. Yeah, after all that time as well. But also what raised suspicions around this, this is an interesting conspiracy theory. And I think this is one that um, Lisa had also mentioned. So a lot of people believe that actually Tony Agostini was set up altogether, but also in on it and took payment to admit that it was Linda Agostini's body, even though the body never remained uh, um, discovered that's why or identified. Less time. Yeah, so they believe that he actually took a payroll from the police and agreed to serve three and a half years sentence with the real Linda Agostini actually leaving him for Italy and the body belonging to an unknown individual. The identification as well that it was Linda Agostini came just as public confidence in the New South Wales police force began to wane at their failure to catch the decade's most mysterious killer. Mm. The circumstances under which Antonio Agostini confessed as well, which is really bizarre, only one person was present to hear, which is the police commissioner, William mm. McKay. 
A lot of people believe right now that it's a very dubious confession and that wouldn't be accepted because there was no one else to witness that, he didn't have any legal defence present. The case might have been left there, but some cast doubt on its conclusion. And in his 2004 book, The Pajama Girl Mystery, by Richard Evans, he pointed out discrepancies with the evidence calling Antonio Agostini's conviction the result of police corruption and a huge miscarriage of justice. Other discrepancies included the pajama girl having brown eyes when Linda Agostini's eyes were blue, the victim had a different bust size to Agostini, and she also had a different shaped nose. He also pointed out that they had 125 possible um, identities listed, but many of them were eliminated and not even contacted or traced. They didn't have any witnesses, they didn't contact any family members, with no follow-up work having ever been completed. Evans also suggested that Linda Agostini was murdered around the same time as the Pajama Girl, but that she wasn't the Pajama Girl, and that most likely her remains were in the confines of the couple's Melbourne townhouse, but that she was not the Pajama Girl, and that Tony Agostini was paid off to line up his story with that of her being How's the Richard Pajama Evans Girl. How's being able to speculate that? That's mad. He's got a load of additional um, kind of case files okay. from the time. He's got a load of... So unless a body was actually found in that house, he can't be saying that sitting there speculating. That could be no, thing. I mean, that's complete speculation. But the fact that she had blue eyes and yeah, um, that stuff brown sense, eyes, that, that all makes sense. It sounds like he's going, oh, but she's probably is still dead and he's probably left there. It's like, well... Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's, no, there's nothing I could see. I mean, it might be in the book. I didn't read the whole book. Um, Get it now on Amazon. There you go. What's it called? Uh, the Pajama Girl Mystery by Richard Evans. That's the case. So it's still very uh, heavily contested to this day. As the drawer is still open in the pajama case. Murder. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's in both cases as well. So a lot of people believe that it was not Linda Agostini that, the, that was the pajama girl. And a lot of people believe that it was not Tony Agostini who was in fact the killer. What do you believe? I don't understand the sentence. I don't understand. Okay, well, it's, he's guilty, but we're just going to charge him on murder. Yeah, I was a bit like, oh, okay, it's just. Da, da, da. Then when he said all the things about, you know, he's, the case was a big case. He's trying to win favor. They were losing respect for the police force. They solved this case very quickly. Yeah. Yeah, a short sentence. It does all kind of. Hmm. And it was like this new police commissioner, William McKay, was appointed two weeks later. He interviews Agostini. Hmm. Two weeks based on this dental record that they've mm. they've re-examined yeah it does it does um <laughs> smell fishy the anchovies on this pizza smell fishy mm. yeah well i guess we will never know at the moment you're you're absolutely right we'll never unless know. you're gonna do any more research and do it and find well, out i'm i'm c quite keen i mean books have been written about the case films have been made about the case and multiple short films and plays have been inspired by the case the most notable film being a film entitled la ragazza del piano giallo which means the Pajama Girl case, directed by Italian Flavio Mogerni. And it was produced in 1977. It's very artsy. It's, um, you haven't seen it? I've seen the trailer. Don't judge a film by a trailer, mate. Hey, and don't judge a corpse by her pajamas. Thank you very much. That was a very interesting case and a lot of yeah. spins to it. And yeah, no, I found that very, very interesting. There's not a lot of information out there about the case. I had to go, I had to go deep web. Sounds like there's about six books and five films about it. Well, there's, yeah, I mean, there's that. But in terms of articles, videos, other podcasts talking about it, our usual kind of, you know, the usual woods that we explore through, um, I, did, I fell in the river. You didn't? You were a metre away from A metre away from the river, yeah. Fell. Dan, what do you think? About what? <laughs> the case, the, the, case? the setup for Patreon and the normal series. I think we should. You've uh, already talked about that. Go, well, no, I, I, I think. I did in front of you, Schwartz. I think we should go down this route, Tom. <laughs> yeah, I actually generally do. So, a massive thank you to Lisa Gregg. Um, really interesting case. Obviously, learned a lot about How Long Road as well. Thirty-three point one seven kilometers. And if you've got a picture of the tub, send it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it'll, this will have gone out, so we'll be put into it, but. We'd like to see it nonetheless. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we'll probably put a picture up that, that you find to put on the case, but I'd still like to see a picture that you take. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, were cameras permitted at, at the, um, it was, is it, would you call that an exhibition? Yeah. You get macabre um, museums, don't you? Yeah. I mean, are there any, because there's that series on Netflix, Dark Tourism, the Kiwi guy. Yeah, but he doesn't go, he's more like him. Chernobyl. Yeah, going more like those kind of places. Where would you like to? Well, It'd be quite, I'd like to go to uh, Pablo Escobar's old house in uh, Bogota. What? Bogota. You get something in your throat. Colombia. I want to go to Auschwitz. There you go. Sure, from the back. Catty's been there twice, I believe. Really? Yeah, she, she <coughs> said it's fascinating. Took my dad there for his birthday a couple of years ago. Yeah, he said, been. Jesus. said, I've always wanted to go there and have a good cry. And we got there 
and he had a good cry. Thank you very much for that, Ben, and thank you very much, Lisa, for that. Cheers, Lisa. Lisa, for that recommendation. Cheers, Thank it, you. It won the poll and it was very, very interesting. It's nice to have it when the case has a slight uh, meaning to the person, I guess. When you have that title, The Pajama Girl Murder, I still don't think that was quite why. I, expe I expected like a sleepover killing. Because mm. it didn't pin on the pajamas as much, did it? Not at all. They were disregarded. Yeah, and it's interesting because the name itself, if you just said the man wearing slacks murder, mm -hmm. I'm not voting for it. That girl in pajama murder got the votes. Again, Jazz the titles up as much as you can because you can do a jazzy name like the Shark Puncher one, which we all know he didn't really put the shark in. He didn't put the shark, but he won it because we thought he did. Make the name spicy mm -hmm. and people will, will go for it. Um, and again, I just want to just again, just want let us know down below what setup do you prefer? This kind of setup or do you prefer the main episode setup? Um, just because I would be semi tempted to change the main setup to this because I think it flows better. I think the energy's better. Yeah. I'm very interested to hear your thoughts on that. Ben, what are your thoughts on it? I'm a fan. I, I like both. I like the variety. So maybe. Get off the fence. <laughs> but then we're then <laughs> Switzerland. What? But, if, if, but I would still want to keep the main chant like that view because it's still nice. It just, I don't know what I'd do it for, use it for. Because I wouldn't want to go, oh, okay, well, we'll do Patreon like that because I don't know if I'd even. Would right. we want to go back there? I don't know. <laughs> no, you just keep doing this and doing that. Yeah. You change more things in the background, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the lighting, I really like the colours. I don't know what they are, but uh, it's blue and... Blue and blue, purple. Yeah, nice. Yours is blue. Nice. Yeah, I just, yeah, be very interested to know what you guys think, because we, we very much value Patreon thoughts, so do let us know. Yeah, thank you very much for that, and uh, we look forward to coming back next week with the first episode. Maybe if you can, guess as well. Guess in the thing below, what's it going to be? If you get it right... We'll send you something... Yeah, really we'll, nice we'll send you a mug what if like everyone gets it right <laughs> some people we'll will. have to time check it as well have to time check it but if someone gets it right <laughs> prepare to have a coffee and a new mug Ben like we always say we say this all the time shut the fuck up thank you very much see you